check out either the website or the updated schedule posted outside mm -hmm. uh, on the door outside of this auditorium. We're starting at 9.30 tomorrow, earlier than usual. Yeah, but those of you who take the bus should be here uh, in time. Next talk is going to be on Majorana versus Condo Signatures in a quantum dot topological quantum wire junction All right. by Luis Diaz da Silva from uh, Sao Paulo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. So let's see if this is working. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for the organizers for the opportunity to give a talk in this very nice conference. Uh, this work uh, has been done in collaboration with uh, several people, uh, including Carlos and Edson Vernack, who is now in Uberlandia, same place where Gerson comes from. So he'll tell you all about Uberlandia tomorrow. And uh, the hard work was done by my former postdoc, Davi Huisti Herina, who is now at, uh, at Manchester with Vladimir Falco. And uh, this was actually, even though Carlos and I are in the same university, this was a long distance collaboration since San Carlos and uh, San Paulo are about 200 kilometers apart. Uh, but it worked out okay. Uh, since this is the, f the very first talk on Majoranas in the, in the conference, I'll try to give a brief introduction and uh, try to break through the jargon and the hype and try to, to get to the essential points that I need later on in, the, in, in discussing how can you use interacting quantum dots as a tool to, de to detect these Majorana bound states. Uh, and then I'll I'll try to convince you that here we, we do have uh, some interesting physics in terms of the Kondo Majorana coexistence uh, on top of the possibility of using the quantum dots as a detection tool uh, to pinpoint the presence or not of these Majorana bound states. So uh, let's start with the basics. What are Majorana fermions? And you can actually go to Wikipedia and, and type it at Majorana fermions, you, you come across uh, the picture of Vittorio Majorana, who in the 1930s uh, developed uh, or found a solution to Dirac's equations re by representing uh, the Dirac matrices that obey the Clifford algebra in terms of only imaginary non-zero elements. So if you plug that in to, the, to Dirac's equations, that because of this I here, will essentially provide a real solution to, to the equation, meaning that these uh, fermionic fields here, they will be equal to their, uh, to their conjugate or to their Hermitian. So an in interpretation of direct particles as being the particle and the, comp the complex conjugate or the Hermitian being the antiparticle, that means that if these particles exist, they would have to be equal to their own antiparticle. So that's the definition of a Majorana fermion. But all he did here was just a new representation. So of course you can, you have to be able to rotate these fermionic fields back to the original Dirac fields, and that is in fact what uh, where lie the some of the interest in the presence of, of these kind of modes, since you can rewrite the, the, the original Dirac fields in terms of these Majorana modes, now you need two in order to describe both the particle and the antiparticle of a, a regular Dirac field. Or you can invert again this and write a single of these Majorana fields as a sum of a particle and an antiparticle. And so here I'm going to borrow an analogy from Leo Cohenhoven, saying that if you think of a particle as a full glass 
and the anti particle or the hole as an empty glass, then the Majorana uh, particle is going to be the half filled glass. So, two half filled uh, glasses can either make a full one or an empty one. And, that, and so, this, in, in the sense, is the, is the crucial uh, point for later on uh, to keep in mind that these guys are actually a combination of an, a particle and an antiparticle. Okay, so this was uh, from the 1930s, and the question is whether we can find them somewhere. Uh, in particle physics, uh, the neutrino was believed to be a Majorana fermion for, for, for some time. There was some controversy, but now it appears it, it is not. But the language of Majorana fermions was applied in condensed matter physics to different systems, uh, particularly in the 90s where uh, there was this proposal of uh, non-abelian anions in the fractional quantum hall uh, uh, five and a half plateau, the famous moore reed Taffian state, where in here was already the hint of trying to use this, uh, uh, these modes to produce these so-called non-abelian anions that could be then useful later on was realized for topological uh, quantum computation. But representations in terms of Majorana fermions were also done in other systems, and this is one that I was more familiar with, where is the description of the non-fermi liquid state in the two-channel Kono model. Uh, and uh, this was the work of several people, uh, including uh, Juan Maldacena before he went on to work uh, with string theory. And more recently, of course, there is these proposals of uh, getting these Majorana bound states in, in topological systems. For instance, either at the interface of topological insulators with regular ECS superconductors, or the most famous one, which is the one I'm, I'm going to focus on today, which is the, the toy model by uh, uh, Sasha Kitaev for the 1D P-wave superconductor uh, out of spinless fermions. So, yeah, there's a big list of uh, proposals in, in condensed matter uh, systems, and now uh, the, this very simple uh, kind of toy model for producing a P-wave superconductor is uh, it's very pedagogical in, in a sense. So what you have is you have a, a, s a simple tight bind chain in 1D, so each one of these blue sites represents a fermionic site, spinless. And then what's, what, what's interesting here is that if you add some sort of uh, pairing that has a P wave nature, so they, they cannot form singlets, these are all spinless fermions. So we, when you write this kind of pairing term and you write the energy spectrum, it comes out analytically, then you have uh, these sort of uh, P wave, oh, sorry, P wave uh, type of um, dispersion where the actual, this term actually goes to zero at some uh, either k, k equals zero or k equals plus or minus pi. So that means that here, depending on parameters you have, you can have two situations. You can, can have a gap system or you can have gapless modes. And it turns out that the, the the gapped system can be classified in terms of a topological invariant, whether you are on this side with uh, the chemical potential in absolute value larger than the hopping T, then you have so-called trivial phase. And here, on, on the other side of this transition where you, you pass through uh, a point where the gap vanishes, you have the topological phase uh, where, and, and here is where the interesting physics lies. So this is, the phenomenology here is very similar to topological insulators. You, you have these two phases separated by uh, a point where you close the gap. So what's, what's the interesting part here? And the interesting part is that uh, if you rewrite the fermions or the whole model in terms of the Majorana modes on living on each site, what it turns out that uh, on, on some limiting cases this become clear, if you are in a trivial phase, uh, 
Uh, and you take parameters like that for sure here, mu is larger than t since you're setting t to zero. Then you can essentially take, look at the, the model written in terms of these Majorana modes here, and you're gonna see that, uh, well, this guy is gonna be zero, this one too. You only get the, the usual kinetic part for t equals zero, which is just the fermion sitting there on each side. So nothing interesting happening here. However, if you go to the topological phase and you set, say, mu equals zero and t equals delta, so that this term goes away, this term goes away, and you're left only with this one, here you have uh, an interesting pairing. You have the one of the, f the Majoranas in one site connected to the next site Majorana type A. So you have you know, this sort of alternated uh, chain that li which if the chain is infinite, it, I mean, you could still keep doing that, but as long as the chain is finite, then it's like uh, the game of, of musical chairs where you will have two, two of these Majorana modes left out unpaired at the ends of the chain. So this is uh, the interesting part because now, of course, you, you could, in principle, write a full fermionic field out of these two, but would be you know, a fermion that is highly delocalized at the ends of a chain that can be quite long. So this is, uh, the interesting thing here is now that uh, you can try to connect chain, many chains like that and use these guys to construct states that will then become non-abelian and, and so on. But the, the idea is, okay, even in this simple model, you'll have some interesting uh, uh, edge modes that have these properties are of being, you know, these half-filled glasses. All right. Now, the, the question is whether you can, uh, you can realize this toy model in an actual experiment. And the original paper by Alexei Kitaev, he doesn't, you know, has some hints, but no, no actual proposal. And the actual proposal came uh, much later uh, in 2010 with these two papers uh, side by side on the same edition of PRL, where they actually propose a system where you would have a 1D quantum wire, uh, a semiconductor quantum wire with strong spin orbit coupling. And then you have to add all the ingredients that you need in the model. First, you need uh, some pairing, so uh, superconducting pairing. So the wire has to be in proximity with a regular BCS superconductor. And then you, you need a spin orbit so that you separate these bands, but you also need the, the low-lying regime or the, the low-lying band to be spinless. So you, you need to apply a magnetic field. Uh, and once you have all these ingredients uh, set, and these papers actually provide the parameters that where in where you would look for the topological phase, in principle, you can get uh, a situation where you not only realize the Kitaev uh, model, but you can also tune it to be in a topological phase. Uh, yeah, the, these are the essentially key ingredients, and you have essentially after you add all these these ingredients here, you, you the, the bands in your system kind of separate like this and you want to, to, to focus on the sweet spot where the chemical potential lies right uh, in this region, in, in between the, these two bands here. And w once you're there, you are there, in principle, you can, you can realize and have uh, the presence of the zero mode, the Majorana bound state. Okay, and then the realization, the experimental realization, the first one, uh, came uh, right after the proposal by uh, Leo Kuhn-Hoven's group, uh, several other groups, and this list is heavily outdated uh, since then, but they have been looking in, into it and try to find a signature of the zero, this Majorana bound state, say, at the edge of the quantum wire. And here they do that by, by transport experiments. And in principle, we would expect that uh, uh, a signal in the conductance would show up as a zero bias peak and has to be at zero bias, a, a particle with its own antiparticle, so it has to be at sitting at energy zero. And in fact, they show that you know, within the 
the window of parameters that you would expect, they do see uh, a zero bias peak that you know, vanishes if you, say, hit uh, uh, a spot where the magnetic field is too strong or too weak. Uh, and then you know, they claim that this should be, uh, this is a more weak experiment. These, these are later on kind of confirmations. So they do see a signature that is consist consistent with the theory. But the question is, is this a success story? Meaning that you have the theory, then you have the experiment, you made a cover of science. In fact, this is, there's an inside joke here, uh, since there's this story of Etoye Majorana uh, vanishing from the face of the earth on a boat trip from uh, Palermo in, in Sicily to Naples. Nobody has ever heard of him again. Some of the conspiracy theories say that he fled to Argentina. My Argentinian friends say that that's not definitely not the case. But essentially he disappeared and uh, the Leo Cohenhoven and, and his postdocs actually played a trick on science or so he said or so he says, that they inserted a picture of uh, Torre Majorana right at the end of the wire in the cover of the magazine. And that was only discovered after it was printed. So the inside joke is that they did manage a way to find Majorana, and they found it at the end of the quantum wire. So it was, yeah, <laughs> was that? <laughs> no, maybe not in the data, yeah. So, and, and uh, as Michael pointed out, uh, there were many controversies on, on this actual result, since there are many other, or a few other possibilities for finding a, a zero bias peak in the system. First, uh, well, the, the criticism is that these could be just undraft bound states. Due to disorder, they, they you know, merge and, and try and localize very close to the to the to zero bias to the to the Fermi at the center of the gap. Uh, there is also the fact that this is a soft gap, it's not a hard gap in the super superconductor. And there's another possibility, which is the Kondo effect taking place in this system. So a, a quick uh, reminder of what the Kondo effect is. So if you have a localized moment, say in a semiconductor quantum dot, where in the Coulomb brocade regime, when you can actually count the number of electrons and put them one by one in the dot, uh, you can have a situation you, where you, you have this effect of uh, uh, magnetic moment in the, in the dot, and it's coupled by tunneling to the electrons in a metallic state, say the 2D, 2D electron gas. And this coupling actually causes an antiferromagnetic uh, uh, coupling between the two. And they tend to form a singlet. And this singlet is not formed between just two spins, but it's a many-body singlet since it's forming with all the electrons here in the metal, here and here too, uh, that's sitting around the Fermi, the Fermi energy. And that occurs below a characteristic energy scale, which is known as the Kondo temperature. And once the, this single, this many-body singlet forms, a new uh, virtual bound state, if you wish, appears since centered right at or near the Fermi energy and providing an additional channel that was not there in the single particle levels for transport. So if you're sitting here and you know, you're measuring the conductance and you lower the temperature, what you would expect is that once this singlet forms, you would have an increase in the conductance at this odd number. So, and this is, of course, happens as zero bias. So as a function of bias, this would be a zero bias peak. In fact, this has been well known since uh, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, that you can get uh, two E squared over H conductance, uh, I mean, perfect condu conductance, so to speak, uh, if you tune your, your, your parameters right. So this could be also be competing with, uh, with that, and uh, you, you can actually, of course, study it, and it has been well defined how to calculate, uh, the, say, the, the condo peak or the, the, the condo resonance, uh, which is very narrow. It has uh, a, a width of about th this energy scale, the characteristic condo temperature. So, and for instance, Wilson's numerical randomization group is the tool to, to actually 
to describe this with very good resolution at these very small energy scales. And that's, this is the method that I'm going to uh, use later on. So the, going back to the, to, the, to the data, there was this paper by um, Siviano de, de Franceschi where they show that if you have a quantum dot uh, in a quantum wire, in here they did it on purpose, but if it's coupled to superconducting leads, then you can have zero bias uh, peaks appearing due to condo correlations. Nothing topological going on here. So this is uh, one of the, the candidates to, to, to explain the peak. And the question is, you know, with all these uh, different possibilities of, you know, explaining the kind of peak, people actually went looking for other solutions where you could actually probe it locally. And we have some of the solutions of re, uh, considering Shiba states on magnetic chains on superconductors on Murcia stock. Uh, two weeks ago. So I'm go not going to talk about that. I'm going to try to focus on this uh, side here and try to actually see if we can use the counter effect to, to, the, to our benefit and, and try to, to make sure that we're measuring uh, a Majorana-related resonance at zero bias. So uh, the proposal here is uh, to use a quantum dot intentionally put at the end of the wire, and this has been recently done by in Charlie Marcus's group. And then measure using the quantum dot as a probe for the presence or not of the Majorana mode sitting at the edge of the topological superconductor. And the, the theory uh, has been uh, started in uh, Harold Berenger's group where they considered a, a non-interacting dot, just a resonant level, and they, they, they saw that this could have a very strong signature in the conductance. And uh, Edson and other, Carlos and other collaborators actually uh, followed up on that and see that it's quite robust depending on the parameters of the dot. But one thing there, there was missing was the fact that, so the, essentially the signature even at no interact, interactions in the dot is that the presence of the, of the Majorana mode here would lower the conductance by half and that can be easily measured in a transport experiment. So it's a quite strong signal. The question that we had is, if you have a, a quantum dot, by definition, it needs to you know, function as a small capacitor. So we, you have charging energies there that cannot be neglected, neglected in, in, in terms. So our question is, what happens to when you add interactions here? So. Uh, and, and that br brings another more fundamental question of whether electron-electron interactions help or, or what they do with the Majorana modes. And this has been uh, studied quite a bit with different models and different techniques. And the overall conclusion is that if you, say, have interactions in the Kita F chain, it essentially just renormalizes things and you still have the, the, the Majorana modes sitting there this was uh, several works in, with DMRG in, in, in the sense. But our work, we have the, the key dive chain coupled to a single interacting site. And then you could think, okay, maybe the, the Majorana doesn't want to go into, into the dot or you know, there's something funny going on here. So in order to do that, we have, we have a model with, that fully incorporates all the ingredients that you need to, to have a key dive chain here plus an interacting quantum dot coupled to the wire. Uh, and of course, this is a spinless uh, system, so we couple only one of the spins, and this is a spoon, spinful quantum dot, couple only one of the spins in, in, the, in the dot. The other one uh, is, of course, uh, at higher energies due to the uh, Zeeman splitting in the wire. And uh, first, we do a mean field calculation using the the, the so-called Hubbard one approximation in order to see you know whether the Majorana is there or not at the dot site, and in fact these calculations show us that if you're just looking at the density of states of the dot, you will see a signature of the Majorana kind of leaking in into this region, even though it's not topological, it serves as a continuation of the boundary, so to speak. So. Interactions do not hamper 
the presence of the Majorana mode so, sort of hopping into, into the dot, and it can actually be detected in the density of states of the dot, and therefore would be detected in, in the conductance as well. That was seen already in the non-interacting case, and here we are confirming that, that this is also the case for the interacting one. However, uh, the Hubble one approximation ha cannot capture the presence of the condo uh, effect in the dot. And in fact, uh, as, as you increase U, there's some, uh, some funny features where the Majorana doesn't appear where it should be uh, in, in terms of as a function of the magnetic field in, in the chain. So instead of, we wanted to exploit this interplay between uh, Kondo and Majoranas, so you, we resorted to, uh, and, and this is the, some of the shortcomings of the, this Hubbard approximation. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we have, uh, uh, we can consider different G factor. So uh, we have a Zeeman split in the dot as well. Yes. So, yeah. It, one way of killing the condo, as I will show, is to increase the field in the dot, have a, a large Z, Z factor. Uh, if the field is very high. But depending. Yes. So it depends on the magnitude of Zeeman splitting and the condo temperature. So we can in principle tune that. So in order to, to apply uh, the energy into this system, we, we have to resort to a, an effective low energy model, which incorporates only the presence of the Majorana already in, in, as an effective uh, Majorana-like mode. So we essentially replace, we assume that we are in the topological regime and re replace the whole eta F chain by just this Majorana zero mode, and then we can do energy on that and, and, and treat the Majorana and the, the condo in the same uh, footing. Uh, now the question is, and this, this model has been used by other people, and one thing we want to make sure that this is reliable, we can do this mapping. And in fact, this is uh, something that uh, Edson uh, did tirelessly, is to find a way to map, at least numerically, the full model with all the ingredients in the Nikita IF chain for you know, Rashba, Zeeman, et cetera, to our effective model that only depends one on one parameter. So we can, choosing the parameters, we can reproduce uh, the, the full model results quite well. So we're very, uh, 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 sh we're pretty much sure that our effective model at least captures the, the correct physics in the topological region. So with that, these are the ingredients of our model. So we have, the, of course, the leads that create a condo. We have the interactions in the dot, and here's the, the Zeeman term there, uh, uh, plus the hopping, and, of course, the, the coupling to the metallic leads. So we treat every, almost like all of this as a single impurity, but it's going to be a funny impurity because you have these extra Majorana mode lying in there. And in fact, that um, uh, this creates some, some interesting dynamics in terms of what happens to the condo peak. So if you look at the spectral density on the uncoupled spin uh, uh, species, which is up in this case, you do have your textbook uh, condo resonance line there for, for this spin. But the other spin that's coupled, what happens is that you have a different signal which is half as high as the usual condo one, which is the signature of the Majorana. And so if you would add these two in the conductance through these two guys, you wouldn't get two, you would get one and a half. So that is uh, a signature of the non-Fermi liquid nature of, the, of these, this state here embedded in, in the interacting quantum dot. So the now, now the question is, okay, then we see that they do coexist. They are there in the same dot, and, and uh, you can actually see features of both the condo and the Majorana mode happening at, at the dot site. Then now the question is, can we filter out the condo and then you know, make sure that we are measuring uh, uh, just the Majorana mode? And the answer is yes. Uh, you can kill the condo effect by several ways, depending on how cruel you are. Uh, you can do one by 
say, changing the gate voltage in the, in the dot and uh, lowering the, the probability of singly occupied levels in the dot so that, that you know, uh, decreases the counter temperature and you go to a regime where the conductance actually drops and you would have uh, just the Majorana half of a, con of a quant conductance quantum contribution lying there. So, you know, if you sweep your gate voltages, you would see something like that. If your wings go to half, then you're, you're sure you are with a Majorana there. If not, then the Majorana is not there. The other one, as uh, Yaroslav was mentioning, is that if you ramp up the Zeeman splitting in the dot, that will kill the condo. And we have uh, many um, studies that show how the scaling of the conductance as a function of magnetic field should behave. And we do reproduce that in our, in our uh, system. And again, uh, this, instead of going to zero, as you would expect in the regular condo uh, regime, it goes to the limiting case of one half, indicating the presence of the Majorana mode. So uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm running out of time. So this is the summary. Uh, one thing that I, I mentioned uh, just in passing is that uh, there's some very interesting physics going on here that can be uh, understood in terms of the O2 channel condo description uh, in terms of Majorana fermions, which is still a non-fermi liquid, and this is one of the signatures. There, there are others. And the other thing is that we can, in principle, use the quantum dot as a tool to, if you do it on purpose, to uh, get a signature uh, out of whether you, you are having a Majorana mode or there or not. And just reminding that the NREV bound state wouldn't tunnel into the dot as, as easily as the Majorana one, so this could be a, another probe. So uh, this was, as, as I mentioned, uh, this was the work of Davi. Uh, my other student, Jesus, who's not here, uh, is also taking on a, pro a similar project. And Dimi and Marcus are here. Uh, and uh, before I, I go, I'd like just to advertise a conference I'm organizing in Sao Paulo in August. It's also going to be at the beach on and, and, and Mares Dias. It's in São Sebastião. Uh, these are the invited speakers. So there's uh, some overlap with this, this conference here, in, including uh, Carlos is, a, is an invited there. Dominic was here uh, three weeks ago. So uh, feel free to come by if you're interested. And thank you for your attention. Some time for a couple questions. Let me let me start. I have a, uh, just a quick question. So to get this one half, mm -hmm. like how universal is 